Now, in this example, I've got some software installed on this Windows laptop to my left called the VNC. VNC allows me to remotely control that laptop. So as an example, on my Mac, I'm gonna start the screen sharing application and connect to the IP address of that laptop and I'm prompted for a password. I've allowed the Mac to remember the password, so I'm gonna click sign in and what you'll notice now is I can control the Windows laptop from my Mac. What I did was install an application here called Tight VNC. This service is listening on port 5900. Okay, but now let's run an attack against that service running on the Windows laptop. And to attack that VNC server, I'm gonna use Hydra, but I'm gonna use the graphical user interface just to make it simple and be able to demonstrate nicely what's going on. So the target device that I'm going to attack is my Windows laptop, that laptop over there. The port that it uses is 5900, the protocol, and you can see there are a whole bunch of protocols here. The protocol that I'm gonna attack is VNC. The password that I'm gonna use is a password list, and the password list that I'm gonna use is stored in user share word lists and try this. So I could use the 139 meg rock U, but I'm gonna use the smaller dictionary. This protocol doesn't require a username, so I'm not gonna set the username. I'm gonna tune this and only set four tasks because that's recommended when using VNC. I could specify specific information such as a proxy, but I'm not gonna do that. So we can see the CLI command at the bottom here, Hydra, port number is 5900. We're going to use a word list for sessions and the server that we're going to attack is 192.168.1.132, protocol is VNC. Let's see what happens. Okay, you can see the password was already detected. That is the password to use to connect to that Windows computer. Now it's continuing and you might not want it to do that because notice we're getting all of these failed connections. So I'm gonna stop that for now and under tuning, let's exit after first found pair per host. And I'll select exit after first found pair globally. So let's click start to see what happens. Okay, there you go, we got the password once again, secure P1, and then it finished. So let's test this password. I'm gonna copy that, and on my Mac, I'll connect to that server manually. And I'm not gonna remember the password, I'll paste the password in, and I'll click sign in. And notice there you go, I've been able to connect to the Windows computer. It was as simple as that to run a live attack against a VNC server. So in that example, I ran VNC. Let's try another protocol like FTP and then I'll show you that it's happening in real time because you'll see all the logs and all the complaints on the server. So in this example, I'm running the FTP server on my Windows computer on my left. So I've got an FTP server configured and if I look in the Windows event log, I can see some information here such as audit success. Someone was able to log on successfully. Here was a log off, here was a log on. So everything looks great. So lots of successes in that audit log. But I'm now gonna attack the FTP server and this is one of the problems doing it online or live is because someone could notice what you're getting up to. So for this example, I'll start Hydra again. I'll use the graphical user interface to keep it simple once again. I'm gonna attack that Windows computer, but in this example, I'm gonna use FTP, which is port 21. Passwords I'm gonna use is a password list, which is try this once again. Now in this example, let's assume that I've captured the username. You could also use a username list here, but just for the sake of time, I'm gonna specify the user and then the password dictionary. Now again, you don't have to use that. You could use a username database and a password database 
and then the computer could just try and go through all of those databases. The only issue with that is it takes time, and just to save time, I'm gonna keep it simple here. So I'm gonna specify the username of Peter and the password list. Okay, so let's do this attack against port 21. This is FTP, username is Peter. Password database at the bottom here. IP address is 192.168.1.132. Click start, let's see what we can do. Notice it's already discovered the username and password to log into that server. But on the Windows server, notice we see a audit failure. We can see that there was a failure with a username Peter. And this has happened quite a few times because in that password database, a whole bunch of passwords have been attempted against the FTP server. So if I go back to my password database, once again, I'm using this database. If I use less to view that database, the software attempts to log in with these passwords before it gets to the Cisco password. So hence, we had some failures and then we had a login with the correct username and password. But if a audit system was being used or a logging system was being used, someone could have been notified that there was a problem here. The problem with logs like this is they're often not read. Someone needs to be warned that a whole bunch of attempts was made to log into the system. In this case, that obviously wasn't done, so I was able to successfully log in. Someone might have discovered this much later or if there's too many logs, they may never be read. So I've now demonstrated how to use Kali Linux to launch an online attack. So we're not doing this offline, this is in real time, I'm attacking that server. Okay.